Next video on ionization energy. Now, again, ionization energy is an atom's ability to protect itself from other atoms taking its electrons. That's a good question. Because some atoms want to have their electrons taken, and other electrons do not want to have their electrons taken. For reference, I've already added back the arrows from two videos ago. Um, and these over here have huge electronegativity values, absolutely huge over here. Um, and these over here go really small. And that leads me to a really good question. We talked about a few videos ago how pretty much everything over here is positive, and there's a lot of negative stuff over here. Positive things want to lose electrons. Or negative things want to gain electrons. So if we just sit back for a brief second, I'm going to put this over here. If we think about that for a brief second, we'll realize if you're trying to lose stuff, are you going to defend? No. And if you're trying to gain things, are you going to defend? Yeah. So that's one way you can think about it right there. As you go across the periodic table, you become more and more negative, plus one, plus two, plus three, eventually where you get to the negative area over here. And again, if you're trying to gain electrons, like for example, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, acetine over here are all minus one. One electron taken, they're stable. If I'm one away from being stable, am I gonna let you take stuff and get, and now I'm two away? No, or better yet, with these values over here, I mean, that's not going to work either, right? There's no way they're going to have you to do that. No way at all. Um, and again, we'll we'll talk about that too. And I will have a video where I can show you some stuff specifically um, for reference, which I think will be really, really great. Um, but again, why? Well, argument number one, these lose electrons, so they're not going to protect. These are trying to gain, they are. The other idea is size. And you can see I kept the um, size examples from here. If you're really big, right, can you really protect yourself from attack? No, and the analogy I make in class sometimes is the Roman Empire, which got so big it eventually started to fall apart because it couldn't handle being that big. Currently, I'm at my house. If I have something in my classroom, can I protect it from someone trying to get into my room right now? No, I'm too far away from it. It is not gonna take them a lot of energy to take an electron from me, because that's really what this comes down to. But my phone's right here. If someone came and tried to take my phone from me, and it's obviously in my grasp, and it's close enough to me, I can defend it. So right now, if someone tried to take my phone, it'd be really hard for them. They'd have to really try to get it out of my hands, because it's right here, close to me. That's a small radius. Whereas something far away from me, like my high school classroom, that's going to take very little energy to take anything from me. Just walk in, take it, walk out. I won't even know. So that argument works as well. That argument works up and down. So for example, these have a higher ionization energy than these. It also works over here. This has a lower ionization energy than these. The smaller you are, the bigger your ionization value. Especially here. Especially here. Whereas over here, because it's so large, it's really easy to take away. So two ways to think about it. Here, they're not they're trying to lose electrons, they're not trying to protect themselves. Low ionization. Here they are. So this stuff's all gonna have a higher electron um, ionization energy in the size argument. Big things can't protect, small things can. One more to go, that's electronegativity, and that's the next video.